Hey my friends, I'm back and I'm talking about the 501 again. Even though I have a giant stack of big power blasters and I just got three other pro blasters. But what can I say? Maybe I shouldn't have started with this one because I like it so much. I went back, I added a couple more features. I did some shorts on that. You might have seen it. Hello there. Yes, I do have other big power blasters to review. Why am I still playing with the 501? Well... We added a little bit of sci-fi to this big power electric blaster. We have a new LED halo switch for the kill switch. Now that lights up. And we also have our voltmeters going. It's a little blinky on camera, but in real life with your eyeballs, it looks great. This blaster had the perfect spot for mounting this. And it even kind of had wire channels already there that weren't being used for anything. I also made a little 3D printed frame to go around my voltmeter. This is a pretty great project blaster and probably the most advanced big power blaster that there is. Because as I mentioned before, this blaster fires darts at 150 feet per second. <laughs> Follow me on YouTube at Maritime Foam in case you want to add power switches or voltmeters to your blasters. They're such a cool touch if you're modding them. So yeah, we have that light up power switch, a voltmeter, and I thought ah, it'd be cool to show people how to do that. Give that overview of adding a voltmeter in. I think power switches and kill switches are cool. So I did that. I did the guide. Everything was great. <laughs> Here's one little problem though. These switches, I thought these were 5 amp, which is borderline as it is. They're 1 amp switches. So that just means there's a good chance using this in this blaster would burn it out too quickly. So I went back in, I thought about doing my first MOSFET. I do have another build that I'm working on with MOSFETs for, but I thought I would also try out relays. These 40 amp relay switches were suggested to me by Builder BB on Instagram. And it's just kind of a more rugged way to do it. It's wiring to one thing. And you know what? This blaster has so much mod room inside. I'll show you kind of the internals of what that looks like here in a sec. But I thought, why not try this? I ordered a few off Amazon. They're cheap. So now, thanks to that relay, I can safely use this one amp switch. And that kind of opens it up to all the really cool funky switches. A lot of those are not five or six amp. So it's kind of cool that now you can use whatever with a relay. As far as what a MOSFET does or a relay does, the easiest way to think of it is you're protecting something that can handle a lower amperage by using one of this. The bulk of the current is going through this. This low amp switch, it's connected to the power, but it's basically just taking a little trickle of that power and it's sending a little trickle to this and basically telling it to open up the floodgates and let the power flow through to the flywheels and motors. So that way it doesn't burn out your lower amp thing. That's not the best explanation, but I'm just learning about these and how they work myself. There's a wiring diagram that you can pause on. If you follow that, you shouldn't have any trouble. If you can solder, you can do it. It just might be a little confusing. There's a lot of wires, a lot of connections. Don't worry if you don't understand it. Sometimes understanding comes after doing. I wired quite a few switches before I really understood what I was even doing. Obviously the big disadvantage of this is it's really big. But other than that, I really like using it. I'm going to be using a MOSFET and doing a guide on how to use a MOSFET coming up pretty soon. I'm going to use MOSFETs in my gear up barricade because I actually want to use the stock nerf switches. In a lot of cases, you would want to replace your stock switches with the 21 amp micro switches that are kind of common. I don't in the barricade because there's just not a lot of room and I want to leave that original barricade on off switch. So I'm going to use MOSFETs. It'll be a good learning experience for me and I'll record it, of course. Just in case you're wondering one other thing before I get into it, the relay stuff is at the end. If you have a higher amp on off switch, like a six amp boat rocker from out of darts or something like that, you do not need to use the relay. So you can just skip the end part. But if you are using a lower amp funky one, you do need the relay. You might wonder, how come I only need a five or six amp on off switch, but I need, or it's recommended to use 21 amp micro switches on the rev trigger. And the reason is when you use an on off switch, you're turning it on, the electricity flows. It's not spiking at the device. I'm probably explaining this terribly because my understanding is low, but as I understand it, that is not a point where electricity is kind of spiking and arcing and adding corrosion and pitting and damaging where the switch is actually connecting. Whereas the rev switch, it's doing a really, for a split 
hair of a second, a really high draw when it starts up and fires up those flywheels and you will get arcing and then you'll get carbon buildup and pinning and things like that. So that's why these rev triggers have that higher amp recommendation. And that's also why a switch will work that's rated for a lower amp for a while. It's just not a good idea because it's more prone to burning it. So better to do things the right way. That's why I put in this relay. Plus it's fun to learn. This was a few bucks for five of these. I'll use them in a few projects. Technically a relay is slower than a MOSFET. A MOSFET is like a chemical thing, whereas this is more mechanical, but you're, you're not going to notice a big difference in an on-off switch for sure. And I think in a rev switch, you'd be fine too. One other thing I did, I actually found it's always good when you mod a blaster to give it to other people to try. A lot of people ended up jamming this. By the time you pull the trigger to turn the cylinder and to move that pusher in, it's a lot of resistance because there's a spring on the trigger, a spring on the pusher. I actually changed the spring on the trigger to a lighter spring. I just had one laying around. You'll see that inside too, I think. Do I show that? I don't know. This was the stock one. It's a pretty stiff spring. That's why when you mod or fail a mod, always keep all your parts and things. So with no further ado, I'm going to let you into the first part of the mod. And like I say, if you're using a lower rated on off switch, you will need something like a relay. If you wanted to also put your rev trigger, if you wanted that to be a cheaper switch as well, for whatever reason, you would need to add a second relay. It's one MOSFET or one relay per switch. It's not a, it's not a thing that protects every different thing. Not a great explanation, but I'm not an expert. But if you follow the wiring diagrams, you can do it. And it's a good, fun addition to the project. This thing is so beefy and heavy now. Oh, the firing, <laughs> the firing is way better. Changing that spring was a good idea. See you on the other side of the guide. All right, don't mind the mess. I'm just going to quickly show you what I have done here. I've <laughs> actually, I've created a kill switch and a voltmeter kind of on its own plug and play thing. This piece here, will plug into my old power port. That way it's all separate in case the switch fails or my voltmeter burns out. I can just easily pull them in and swap them. I really like using connectors so things can be swapped out and be more modular, especially if you make mistakes. I need to get some wire connectors and just to have a bunch more on hand. But XT60s or XT30s will certainly work in a pinch. I don't have this hooked up to the blaster right now, but if I hit this power switch, this LED will go and my voltmeter will power on. And if my blaster was plugged into this XT60 here, it would rev and fire. I really like these little touches on blasters. I've been doing it more and more, kind of collecting different cool switches and things off Amazon. A voltmeter is always handy to know where your battery's at. And you can wire a voltmeter a few different ways. You can have it so that it just comes on when you're revving the blaster. Some people hook them up to jam switch doors. I kind of like, as soon as I turn a blaster on, if I'm using a power button, I like the voltmeter to light up because I'm doing it as much for show as anything. But you might not want to do that if your blaster doesn't have an on off switch. In that case, you might want to put it on a jam door or somewhere where you can just open it and check it. And as you'll see when I go over this, it's pretty easy to insert a voltmeter wherever you want. I'm going to move the blaster back a little bit just so I have a little bit more room for show and tell here. Never test with a LiPo. I've already tested with a nine volt battery. Uh, so I know that everything's good to go. That's why I have a LiPo plugged in for when I show you things in a second. So here is what we've done. And I'm going to do some wiring diagrams for how to wire up this particular four pin LED halo switch as well. You'll also notice I made a few mistakes here. That's why this negative turns into a positive and this positive turns into a negative. Well, they don't actually change. It's just the color of the wiring change. This is my negative side. I'm sorry. This is my positive side of my XT60. The flat side is always positive. The pointy side is always negative. I messed that up yet again. That's why I have this wire switcheroo. You can ignore this first bit of wire. <laughs> Once we get to here, this is correct. We have our positive and negative come out of here. We have this four pin switch. It's not going to be easy to see here how I've wired this, but the wiring diagram will help. Plus I've already put some shrink. Let me give you kind of the Coles notes on this. This wire right here is actually positive too. I used black wire instead of red wire. Silly me, that made it more confusing for you guys. The very top of this switch, the way it's oriented, the plus is at the top pointing up. 
So this top is plus, this bottom terminal is minus. There's a left and a right. On my left is this positive. So the way we wire this is positive comes off the battery and into the post on the left. Again, that's if the plus is on the top. And then the negative from the battery comes and goes into the bottom and then continues on to be the negative to our connection that will go to a motor or rather our switch in this case so that we can power the motor. So this is negative goes in the bottom and then continues off of the bottom. This is positive goes into the left stays there and then in the top here we have positive comes out of the top where it's marked positive and goes in to the positive which would go into a switch if we didn't have this kind of quick connect here. The other thing to note about this positive on the top is it goes into the top and then it actually sneaks over and connects from the top over to the pin on the right. So it's here and then it goes over to there. The reason we have it wired this way is so that when we push this in, the light will come on and stay on while it's on. You can wire up these switches a few different ways. You can have them always be on. You can have it on until you turn it on and then the light is off. You can configure it a few different ways. I have it so that when you press it down, it lights up when the blaster is active. This was pretty easy to solder. Again, I will give you a wiring diagram. This is not that hard as long as you know where your positive and your negative are, and that's top and bottom. So 12 o'clock up here is positive. 12 o'clock goes over to three o'clock, positive. At six o'clock, that is a negative coming off, and at six o'clock, that negative goes back to the battery. And then over here at nine o'clock is a positive, and that goes over to the positive on the battery. Hopefully that was kind of helpful. So then we go into here. Now I have an XT60 here, but this could easily be your positive over here and your negative on the pointy side. This could be your positive and negative that go to the switch. You wouldn't have to have an XT60 here. You could ignore that if you wouldn't do it. And then what I have here is just spliced into my, it's covered up here by electrical tape on my positive wire, which should be red. <laughs> Uh, off of here, this is positive, positive, positive. This is a three wire voltmeter, a yellow and a red. Red is your positive, obviously. Yellow is actually needed to measure the current. So you can basically twist the yellow and the red together and tie them both into your positive here. You could also desolder the positive and the yellow and have the positive bridge over to the yellow, but it's already wired. I just, it's easier to do it this way. And then our negative that comes off of our voltmeter just splices into the negative that goes into the XC60. So I put my voltmeter in after the switch because I want my voltmeter to come on when I press this switch in. If I wanted my voltmeter to be on all the time, I would have spliced in over here because this is the power coming out from the battery. If I wanted my voltmeter to only light up on rev, then I would splice the positive, the positive and the yellow into the wire coming off of my switch and then I would put my negative into my wire that goes back to the battery. I hope that kind of helps. As far as what I've done for placement here, this blaster has some really great natural spots for these things. So the front of this blaster actually had like a round bit up here. It had a little post in there. It wasn't really used for a whole lot. I dremeled that out kind of in a half circle. This fits right in there. So the tip of my blaster will have this cool light on it, which I really like. And then back here, I dremeled out another post. This, we do lose one screw post, but that's okay. I don't, we, there's lots of screws. I dremel, I started a hole by dremeling, and then I used an X-Acto to cut through this plastic slowly but surely. And I did that as evenly as I could on both sides. That's it, really. I'm going to put this together. I'll do one more close up of everything placed together and then we'll take a look at the final result. I've used some hot glue to secure this in. It's almost like it was meant for this. There's like natural wire channels up through the top here that weren't being used for anything. I did hot glue some of my wires down. There's lots of room underneath that faux barrel. No, I guess it's a real barrel, but there's lots of room underneath that barrel for extra wiring. Our little on off switch is nestled in there. Let me just turn that on. Now that lights up. Our voltmeter is going. It's a little blinky on camera, but in real life with your eyeballs, it looks great. So yeah, I'm going to close this up. One last optional step is I took some measurements with my digital calipers, made a nice little frame and added that around my voltmeter just to make it look that much cleaner. I really like that as an extra touch. We are so far beyond actually being able to show you 
in the blaster what's been done because of the mess I've made that we'll just be using some wiring diagrams to go over everything. But some new things that were added that I'll just show quickly. One non-electronic thing is I actually swapped out the stock spring for one that wasn't quite as stiff. It's always interesting to hand a blaster to someone who doesn't use blasters as often. A lot of people jammed it because they just didn't pull hard enough on the trigger. Between the old stiff spring there and this spring, you're you're doing a lot of compressing just to push a dart in. And what I found is when I handed it to people first try, they just weren't pulling hard enough to get the dart all the way to the flywheels. I think that softer spring will help. I added some hot glue around the edge of that because I did find, even though I screwed that shut to kind of try to clamp it, it did get a little bit wiggly. So I added some hot glue, my favorite thing. And here is our 40 amp car switch relay all wired in here. So we can use this one amp light up switch that I thought was five amp. Let's go over this and what we did and how to do it. So first we have our original wiring diagram. This one assumes that we used a on off switch that was the proper amperage. And I think this one's pretty clear. It shows you how to go through the pins. If you end up using a five pin switch, there are diagrams for that online you can find, but this one is a four pin. And now we get into our 40 amp relay edition. I'm going to talk a little bit and then just assume that you will pause on this as a reference. But you can kind of see here, anywhere that there's two lines meeting and there's a circle, that just means it splits off from there. If two wires cross without that circle, it's just them, one of them going over the other. Sorry, this diagram gets so messy. But you can see our positive power goes into our relay and splits off to our low amp switch. And our negative goes into the relay and splits off to our low amp switch as well. And you can see at the top of the relay, there's a path directly from the relay to where, you know, out towards our flywheels. So you'll just want to kind of trace all through that. And like I said, you're basically using a relay or a MOSFET to send a little trickle, a little signal to open up the floodgates of power so that that LiPo power will go through the relay and around to the flywheels. And you're only ever getting that trickle of power through your low amp thing. One other thing I'll show you, <laughs> thanks to Builder BB, because this is kind of the first reference he gave me. Here's what it would look like if you didn't have an on off switch and you just wanted to use one of these relays for a rev trigger. I just thought that might be handy to throw in here, even though I, I that's not what I did. Go slow, follow these wire paths, use a nine volt to test, not a lipo, and you'll figure it out. I'm just here because I said I'd see you on the other side of the guide. I hope this is helpful. See you next time.